Hi everybody, this is Dave Moraine and it's, uh, well, welcome to the Math Notations Vids YouTube channel. If you got here from my blog, Math Notations, or by random searching on topics, welcome again. Um, I did publish a, um, a post on Math Notations a couple of weeks back after Pi Day <clears throat> um, involving two randomly chosen numbers M and N, positive integers, and what is the probability that the two numbers are relatively prime? That's a term that has to be defined unless you already know about it. Um, and it turns out that the answer is the reciprocal of the result that we got up here from my last video. Uh, I described how Euler derived this extraordinary formula, the sum of these uh, fractions equals pi squared over 6, and it turns out that this probability is roughly 60% and exactly 6 over pi squared. We're going to try to make sense out of that, and I'm going to jump right in. The background uh, that we need for this, and I generally tried to do this when I was in the classroom. If I was developing a topic I would ask myself, well, what are the background skills needed to introduce quadratic functions or logarithms? And I would go through the procedures and the skills and, and make a decision about how much time to spend on reviewing first. It might have been in, in the warm-up part of the lesson uh, where I gave try these problems. It may be that I decided to uh, give some background before introducing the new topic and show how it's related to what they had learned previously or just as it comes up in the lesson I would stop and say do you remember? Anyway for this uh, derivation there are a lot of skills and concepts needed we need the definition of relatively prime factoring and arithmetic not algebra here using what is called the fundamental a theorem of arithmetic, which basically means that uh, every uh, positive uh, integer greater than 1 can be factored into primes and powers of primes. I mean, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but just think about a factor tree. And remember, I'm addressing this not only for undergraduates in college uh, taking a number theory course, but for advanced middle school students, so I do have to define a lot of terms and review basics. Probability concepts are needed independent and complementary events. Strong algebra skills, we're going to work with negative exponents, and we're going to work with the distributive property. And uh, finally, we will need to use the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series. I will discuss that briefly. And then we'll use a over 1 minus r. You learn this in a pre-calculus type of class or in an advanced algebra class. So that's the background. Uh, let's jump right in. Relatively prime. So what does it mean? Well, let's look at the numbers 8 and 9. Here are two positive integers. Neither of these are prime. However, they're prime to each other. What does that mean? Well, 8, of course, is a power of 2. So 8 is only divisible. <coughs> the only prime 8 is divisible by is 2. <coughs> and 9 is a prime. I'm sorry, not prime. But... The only uh, uh, prime 9 is divisible by is uh, 3. So 8 and 9 have no common factor other than 1, and in particular, no common prime factor. Now you know what relatively prime means. It doesn't mean the numbers have to be prime. They could be prime. So 5 and 7 are also relatively prime. But 
it is not required that they be prime. They simply are prime with respect to each other. Another term for that is co-prime. That's enough of the uh, terminology. Let's move on now. Now we have uh, a basic understanding of what this question is asking, or do we? I think the next issue is to make some sense out of randomly chosen. So how does that work when there are infinitely many positive integers? Exactly how are they chosen? And this is a general type of question that appears throughout mathematics. How do we make sense out of an infinite process? In almost every instance of which I'm aware, we begin with a finite consideration. Instead of worrying about infinitely many positive integers, we focus on a finite set. Let's just say we look at the numbers from 1 to 100, those positive integers. And we try to make sense out of this question. And if you recall, when I published the post uh, that was an exploration for middle school and high school students about um, 6 over pi squared, uh, it was experimental. The students needed to list all the pairs and count and determine the relative frequency of pairs of integers that had no common uh, factor or those that did have a common factor, and we looked at uh, several instances. So I'm just going to look at the numbers from 1 to 100, and how would we determine uh, what the probability would be if two of these uh, numbers are chosen randomly? Well, think of it as two separate decks, deck number 1 and deck number 2. Each deck has all of the positive integers up to 100, The reason I say this is we're going to choose an M from here, a number from the first deck after the cards are shuffled, deck of cards, <laughs> and we're going to choose a, a random card, say, from the top of the deck well, from the second deck. So what we have here is um, a random number and another random number, and that's what we mean by saying we're choosing two random integers. Notice that this allows us to pick a 4 and 4, or 5 and 5, and that's uh, going to be a consideration for us because it's not as if it's without replacement. If I was taking it from a single deck and not putting the card back in, then I could not get repeated events. Here we can. 4 and 4 are uh, not relatively prime because they are divisible by the same prime uh, 2. They clearly have a common factor. 5 and 5, again, both prime numbers, but they are both divisible by the same prime 5, so we would not say that they are relatively prime, so we actually have to take this into consideration. But I don't, I don't want to get that technical. <clears throat> we'll just move on from here. Let's say we're interested in the probability, and I'm going to use um, PR for probability, that um, 2 divides M. Notice the notation. The vertical bar is used by mathematicians in number theory to um, denote divides. 2 divides m. 2 is a factor of m. m is divisible by 2 and the various ways of expressing that. What is that probability? Well, I'm going to shut this video down as soon as I arrive at this result and I'm going to move to part two in about 10 seconds. But the answer is a half because 50 of these 100 integers are divisible by two, and we get exactly a half. And similarly, the probability that two divides n is one half as well. 